in the diagrams below, we've got an exponential, which is f, and we've got g, which is a hyperbola. So let's quickly, we've got f, which is the um, exponential, which is over here. And then we've got g, which is a hyperbola. Okay. Now it says the two graphs intersect at A and B. The point A is where both graphs cut the y-axis. The asymptote meets point C at negative one and three. Okay, so that's important. We know that point C is where they, the asymptotes meet. First question is determine the coordinates of A. Well, A is a y-intercept, okay, of both graphs. So you see with this graph, we don't really have a lot of information, so let's not use that. But with this one, we have everything. So we could take f of x and we could find its y-intercept. So, because remember, a is the y-intercept. You don't have to write that in the test. I'm just making some notes for you. So we know that a y-intercept is where x is zero, right? And so we could say, what is f of zero? That's gonna give you one. Remember, anything to the power of zero is one. So the coordinates of A would then have a X value of zero and a Y value of one, okay? Now, determine the equation of G by finding the values of A, P, and Q. Very, very easy, let me explain why. We know that a hyperbola, they could say, now listen carefully, this is important, they could say X minus P, or they can say X plus P. That makes no difference to what the final answer is gonna look like. Okay, um, to what or, or to what the final equation is going to look like, but it is going to change the value of what p would be. Okay, so let's let's quickly talk about that. I want you to forget about this completely, and I want you to just look at this hyperbola that you see over here. Has that asymptote, this one over here, has it moved left or right from the y-axis? Well, it's moved one place left. And so we know that that means it should say x plus one at the bottom there. It's got nothing to do with whether they used a plus or a minus. We know that if the asymptote has moved one place left, then that's what this should say. Then we know that the, the horizontal asymptote has moved three places up, okay? And so we know that that should say plus three over there. Now we can look at the equation that they gave us and we can just make a comparison. So they already had a plus here and we have a plus here. So then we can simply say that P is one. P must be one, Q must be three, and then A we're still gonna go find, okay? But if they gave us the equation X minus P, they could easily have done that, then you still would have had this. This still would have been the same. You won't change that. But then what you would do is you would look here and you would say, ah, okay, so P must be minus one. Make sense? Okay, now we need to go find A. So A is the last thing that we need to find. So to do that, you just plug any point on that graph. You can't plug this, that's not on the graph. When we say on the graph, we're talking about it must actually be on the graph. So we do have one point that we found in the previous question, which was point A, which we found over here, remember? And we said that the coordinates there would be zero and one. And so what we can then do is we could say that um, g of x is equal to a over x plus one plus three, and then we can just go sub in that point, zero and one. So one is the y value, and zero is the x value. And so that's just gonna end up giving us one equals to a, because this is just gonna become a over one, which is just a, and then plus three. Then if we solve for a, we end up with a negative two. Okay, so a is negative two. A equals negative two. So let's just go write out their final answer now. So g of x is equal to, okay, no, that's not gonna be enough space. Um, okay, so the answer here would just be g of x is equal to negative two over x plus one plus three. This question says, determine the f of, my, okay, they meant, th they meant determine the equation of the inverse, which is this, and write it in the form y equals. Okay, so they want the inverse of that. Now, we're just gonna go write it as one over five x. Now we know with inverse, what do we do guys? We switch x and y around. And also, I want you to know that this is an exponential. What is the inverse of an exponential? Well done if you said log. 
Right, now we need to be able to convert this into log form. So we know that we want the y, so that's the exponent. Now you see that this number here is the base. When you turn it into a log, that's still gonna be the base, okay? And then you're just gonna put x like that, and you can write it like that. And so there's the answer. They said, um, and write it in the form y equals, well, there we have it, y equals log one over five x. This question here says, sketch the graph and clearly show any two points. Very easy because remember what we've learned. We've learned that when you do um, inverses, the x's and the y's change. So all that we actually need to do is we just need to go look at all the information that we already have about this exponential and just switch things around. So one of the things we know about this exponential is that its asymptote is y equals to zero. Because if I look at this exponential equation, if there was a part here like plus three or minus two, that is your asymptote. So if there is nothing there, then you can imagine it's like a zero. So this line here, the x-axis, that is the asymptote. So that is the y equals to zero. So what will that become for the log graph? Well, that'll just become x equals to zero, which is the y-axis. So we know that the y-axis is going to be the uh, asymptote of the log graph. The next thing we can switch is this point of a year. We see that this point of a year um, is on the exponential as zero, one. Now, what will that become when you switch it to a, a inverse? It'll become one, zero, which is over here, okay? But now we're stuck because we don't really have anything else. And so we just need one other point. So what we'll do is we'll take this original equation of f and we'll just go find another point. So we'll make, for example, you can make x equal to one and that'll just give you um, a fifth to the power of one, which is a fifth. So that means on the exponential, when x is one, y is a fifth. If you then change that to be on the log graph, you would switch the coordinates around like that. So then you can go plot that point. So where is a fifth? Well, a fifth is the same as 0 0.2. So it's somewhere here. And then the y value is one. So it's gonna be somewhere over there, for example. Now we know that a log graph either goes this way or it goes, um, wait, let's just get this right. So either that way or it would, for example, go like that. So we know now that because this dot is here and that dot is to the left and above, then it must run. And we also said that this is the asymptote, so it can't go past that. So it's gonna go something like that. You gotta know your basic shape. So we know that a log graph either goes like that or like that, okay? And so there we have the log graph drawn. So we have the three things. We've, we know that the, the vertical asymptote is there. We know this point and we know um, the coordinates of, and we should actually fill in this coordinate. I forgot about that. What did we say? X is a fifth and Y is one. So remember that guys, when you can't get, when you're struggling to draw your inverse because you don't have enough information, then you need to go find a point on the original graph and then switch those coordinates around and then plot that on the inverse graph. Okay, now uh, where are we? Okay, so we finished that one. So now let's just see if we can neaten up a little bit over here. Now it says determine the values of X for which the inverse is bigger than or equal to negative two. Now, you see the problem is on the inverse graph, we don't know anything about negative two. And remember, this is our y value. So we don't know negative two and we don't really like to work with this log expression, okay? I mean, you can if you want, but it's not always um, the most comfortable. So there's di different ways we can do this, but what you must understand is that this is a y value, okay? So what would that be? on the original. Would that be a y or an x on the original? That would be an x on the original. So let's go to the original and put the x as minus two. See, because now it's easy to work with. If x is minus two on the original, what does the y value become? If you type this in your calculator, it becomes 25. So we know then that on the exponential, if x is minus two, y is 25. So what does that mean on the log graph? Well, that means on the log graph, 
it would be 25 and minus 2. So that would be over here. 25 and minus 2. So now they're saying determine the values of x where the log graph is bigger or above minus 2. So that is what this is saying. It's saying where is the log graph above minus 2. So minus 2 is here. Okay, That is where minus 2 is. So where is the log graph above that? Well, the log graph is above minus 2. All of this is above minus 2. All of that is above minus 2. Okay. As soon as you go past that point, like over here, then you're going below minus 2. Then you're going under minus 2. But they're saying, where is the graph above minus 2? So it's that purple part. So that purple part is, I'll show you interval notation as well, but that's anywhere between the asymptote. Remember, there is an asymptote here. Okay, and then that's going to take us all the way up to the x value of 25. You never include your asymptote, but you do include uh, the 25 because they're including this point over here. Okay, so they said, what are the values of x where the graph is bigger than minus 2? Well, it's between the asymptote and the 25. If you prefer interval notation, you won't include the asymptote, but you will include the 25, so you would use a square bracket. Now, the last question says, graph h is produced when you shift graph g one place right and two places up. Write down the equation of h. Okay, so you should all get full marks for this one. So what we know for g is that it is currently this equation. Okay, now they're going to shift it one place to the right. So remember, what does this mean? That means that your graph is already one place to the left of the y-axis. That is what this means. So if you shift your graph one place to the right, then it means the asymptote is now going to be on the x-axis. And so this actually just becomes x. That'll just be x. It won't be shifted left or right of the y-axis anymore. And then shifted two units vertically downwards. So this, instead of saying plus 3, this would now say plus 1. Okay. If you want to look at a different way of doing this, you could have said that, um, oh, and now we should change this to h of x. But you could have done it like this. You could have taken the original equation, and then you could have shifted it uh, one place to the right. How do we shift things right? You say minus. And then how do you shift things down? You say minus. And so these would have cancelled, and then this would have become a 1. Okay, so those are two different ways you could have looked at that.